Sojourn is arguably the highest skill ceiling DPS we've ever seen get put into Overwatch. So much so that the Overwatch League abused the character to require Blizzard to nerf her into the ground, losing a lot of her extra utility, turning her numbers back in an attempt to allow some other DPS get played at the highest levels. That means when the average player picks up Sojourn, you better be playing her correctly, understanding where her strengths lie and applying them. Otherwise, you're going to struggle to get more value than other heroes. Our Platinum Sojourn player was convinced that their team was lackluster. This was one of my best performances. Not sure I could have played much better. Well, that's why we need to upgrade your gameplay because of course, if you're in Plat, there's going to be lots of mistakes that you're making that a top level player wouldn't make. What they were confused about in this game was what to do when there is no space created by your team, not getting focused so much by the enemy. Ooh, as you will find out, dear viewers, this is quite an ironic comment because our Sojourn has flankitis. I think a lot of metal rank players are used to having DPS teammates that have the condition and it is the problem of going on bad flanks. We'll show them off and then go into a deeper explanation of why these are bad and what you should have done or what hero you should pick instead if you want to do these. Our first flank on A is a classic flank spot for some characters. Through the hotel into the back line, we're able to go take out the enemy Brigida. However, there's only one major downside. Our tank is holding the front line and gets taken out by their Widowmaker. It's kind of interesting the exchange that happens here. Their Widow takes a main angle looking at the front line and our Sojourn flanks off to the side. It actually takes multiple seconds for the enemy to even adjust to our position. So we could have done more in this spot if our aim was better, but I wanna talk about the trade-off of taking this spot. Because we're Sojourn, a character that needs to farm up a lot of hits to then shoot a rail, we have big spikes of damage output and if we're not able to hold our position and farm up rail we're significantly less threatening so after we shoot the first rail we're basically not a character and are forced to run away out of the fight in a situation that a one-for-one -one trade we should be able to finish the fight potentially but we took this positioning off on our own which meant that if we did not deliver the goods with shots the enemy was going to be able to turn and focus us sojourn isn't as competent of a flanker on this type of map king's row a really medium to short range map as Cassidy might be. Cassidy is better for flanking in this position because he can turn the corner, throw magnade, and his damage is consistent where three body shots and a nade and then possibly headshots mixed in there can get him some very fast time to kill. Sojourn on the other hand needs to wait for the rail to build up but frankly both of them may have served better to just hold on the frontline position. Our plat hero thinks that they need their team to make space but you had the space to flank. What did that get you? Not a whole lot. When you're defending, just holding position and shooting them off of the objective is all you need. The enemy Widowmaker shouldn't be able to get value just by shooting your tank, but was because you didn't shoot theirs. Sojourn is great at farming off a tank and then using a rail to either shoot them or one of the squishy teammates over and over again. And if you are flanking away from the enemy tank, you're actually losing your best way to farm up your rail gun, meaning you're going to shoot less rails overall. They might feel harder to hit when you're not flanking because you're facing square up and there might be a shield in the way, but Sojourn just simply isn't one of the better characters of playing a position on her own. As we realize, as we attempt to go on some very strange <laughs> hallway flank, I mean, this is like a Valorant position, I suppose, where the enemy are not going to get cleared off the objective, are gaining objective progress all this time, putting ourselves in a position where we could die at all, similar to how we were playing point A, just yields up the objective for the enemy. King's Row is a classic map where if you just stand on crucial corner positions like the first choke in streets or if you have to the bookstore you can hold those positions forever and the enemy has to aggress into you. And while I prefer Cassidy for this job understanding that Sojourn is a turret character not a flanker will go far to really help out your gameplay. Let's try to think from this weird Valorant position we're holding what hero can we kill with zero rail charge? Is there any hero that we want to see in a hallway by ourselves? Not really. Sojourn is a hero that is dominant at farming her primary off tanks in order to get a rail, then peeking off and getting a headshot elsewhere. She's 
not actually the competent duelist as other damage heroes might be, like Cassidy, Widowmaker, etc. They can just turn, look at a squishy, and have a very fast time to kill. Sojourn is more of a teammate type hero who wants to be fighting with her team, and the only time you could flank is when you build up your rail, which only lasts a few seconds now. Back in the day, it lasts forever, so you're able to flank off farther, but even then, you wanted to farm up the rail first before doing so. It's our mistake to go off on our own, to put ourselves out of position that either alleviates pressure off the enemy front line that would have stopped them from advancing. A good way to stop a tank from moving forward onto your team is to shoot them in the head repeatedly. And Sojourn's amazing at that. That mistake helps our tank get run over on point A, are getting staggered for our team to not have a DPS threat for the entirety of the streets phase because we wanted to go off on a flank and lost a duel in a situation we were almost never going to win no matter how skilled we are. If the enemy widow can hit a shot in a hallway, we just don't want to be Sojourn in that position ever. That allowed the cart and the enemy team to keep steamrolling by us staggering ourselves. Instead, what we want to focus on doing as Sojourn is syncing up with the team formation. And with your big movement ability, it shouldn't be a problem for us to do that. But we keep trying to extend our life when our team is dead, which further staggers us more. Ironically enough, we begin to look like we know how to play the game when we get on C because our spawns are all the way backed up to the wall and we're forced to regroup with our team. Fighting at the same time as us, we start to notice how good this character can be, where we get the type of engagement where their front line is on our front line and we just hit shots from the back over and over again. That's how you want to play a turret style character, not flank out of position for a low percentage play, just farm up as many stats as you can from the back. Us finally playing Sojourn like the turret character she is in the back on C meant that our team wasn't down a player in every defensive fight like previously. We had a DPS, we had five players, the enemy needing a big team clear in order to advance the cart all the way to the final checkpoint. They weren't able to do that. This game is winnable with a triple cap, but our plat hero's positioning is going to come back to haunt him on point A when it's his turn to attack. Taking this sniper nest position and specifically sniping out the enemy Widowmaker was a good start, but we've got a couple team fights here where we make the mistake of playing too passively. Remember, Sojourn has an amazing escape ability, so as we start to have an advantage and the enemy is running away, we can walk towards them holding our escape that if they throw something lethal at us, we can dodge backwards. But maintaining on the high ground meant that our team isn't going to gain the space they otherwise would. That's an interesting way to say it as well because our hero specifically said that the team wasn't making space, but damage pressure makes space too. Shooting the enemy and continuously shooting them to advance is the way DPS players make space by applying pressure in the right spot. But if you don't advance, well, the enemy can do the King's Row classic, what I said your team should have been doing the whole time, right? Including you, just hiding on a corner, regenerating their resources, then touching the objective again. If you don't go clear them out yourself, especially when we're popping overclock, expecting them to run in to contest the point when you're ulting, no, they're doing the game sense play, dodging the ult, allowing you to gain some objective progress, outweighting your ult, then coming back when it's not online. This is multiple instances now where we seem to not realize Sojourn's power spikes. The primary rifle doesn't do that much. It's a means to an end to farm up rail. An overclock is a better way to clean up a chaotic fight when it's committed, not to scare the enemy away. As the enemy starts to run, if we progressed forward onto the objective, we would have seen multiple squishies that we could have taken out. And it looks even worse as we notice that our Mercy popped her Valkyrie, hoping that the team rushed in. Your Mercy was making as much space as a teammate can, popping resources to go finish the fight. You both had the right idea. You just positioned in Narnia, away from the enemy, allowed them to survive off in a corner as opposed to putting your gas pedal on when you're using your ult to finish the enemy. Your Mercy was ready to pocket you. Play closer to your doom here and actually hit shots into the front line or anybody here to begin winning the fight. It's interesting because oftentimes there's a lot of high ranked players that say aim isn't so important to ranking up. And I'll modify that statement to say once you have competent aim, it's not that important because we already can see the big gaps in value of our player that is simply not because of their aim at all. They can land some hits, but what they lack is the awareness of where to position when. Misunderstanding what type of hero we're playing. Turret style DPS are going to be best when they are rotating effectively, maintaining a forward position that's safe, that can continuously shoot the enemy, making the read of staying in sync with your team when they're going in or using resources, and when to crossfire as the enemy is retreating. Because the truth is, you don't actually 
actually have to play the skill shot DPS to rank up in Overwatch. You can play much easier DPS if you just understand the rotation game, how to ebb and flow with the team fight based on whether you're winning or losing it. It's a little bit ironic that we eventually cap A when we're going into overtime and we feel the need to have to touch the objective. It almost accidentally put us in position to push the gas pedal down to finish the team fight. But if we would have had that attitude from the start and continued to pressure or keep a active sight line on the enemy as we have a man advantage, then we possibly would have snowballed the whole map, honestly. Which we end up doing because we begin to put the gas pedal down. We move forward to go face the enemy to force staggers. This gets the cart advanced all the way to C. But because we made crucial mistakes earlier in the game, we have a much lower time bank than we otherwise should have. This is actually a really interesting clear example that like when we do the right things based on positioning for a classic Overwatch map King's Row, we have immense success. But as soon as we do the wrong thing, it goes horribly. It's actually not often that examples are this clear. Remember guys, DPS make a lot of space in Overwatch 2 in the one tank gameplay. We're no longer playing Overwatch 1 where if your two tanks don't move in the right direction, then you never have the ability to do any meaningful damage ever. That is not the case. DPS is a much more crucial role. And if you go AFK, your team is really going to notice the lack of uptime in your position. Keep in mind, this is why in most Overwatch metas, there typically is a ranged hit scan or turret style DPS who plays the main line and one flanker, but picking a DPS flanker pick that's more capable for the job. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come out and check the link in the description to submit in your own replay codes for review on the channel. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.